Hey there, I'm Tucker and you're watching D&D Daily. If you're here for D&D inspiration and information, then you're in the right spot because today we're talking about the bullet. Bullets are massive predators that live underground and hunt the prey above ground. They're often called land sharks due to their unique tactics, which we'll talk about later. Um, but essentially they just lay underground and use their tremor sense and then ambush whatever is above them. And they'll usually eat whatever is above them. They have a particular distaste for elf and dwarf flesh and a particular liking for hobbit flesh. However, because they just attack whatever's above them, they usually attack, but without knowing what it is. Um, bullets have a large territory and they hunt all across it. And they can travel quite quickly because of their high burrow speed. And they'll use their claws to burrow through the earth and then pop up wherever they need to whenever they get hungry. Um, the lore behind bullets is that many believe that they are a failed or maybe a successful wizard uh, creation of a mix of a snapping turtle and an armadillo infused with uh, demon ichor. Um, I don't know how well that fits the description, but I think uh, it's pretty good and I think it's a cool storytelling opportunity to have uh, somebody see you know, a giant snapping turtle and not really know what it is um, or something like that. Um, <clears throat> going over uh, the tactics that the bullets use, they'll kind of layer up underground. Not layer in the sense of they defend their lair, but layer in the sense of they'll wait there to ambush the prey above ground. So they'll wait, you know, 40 feet below below ground, or probably probably 20 feet below ground. Yeah, they'll wait 20 feet below ground, and then whenever something's walking above them within their 60 foot of tremor sense, they'll feel it. And when that target gets close enough, they'll pop up, attack, and then pop back down. Um, they use their strong jaws to do devastating bite attacks, as you can see, as a plus 7 to hit, and it does 30 piercing damage on average, which is massive. Um, there's a reason that this is a CR5. Part of it is because of its AC and its hit points, but I think a big part is because it does 30 damage in one hit, which is pretty ridiculous. <clears throat> um, the other thing it has is its deadly leap. Because, for some reason, these bullets are really good at jumping, they also have this deadly leap ability, which is whenever they jump 15 feet, they can land on- they can use their action to land on a creature. And if the creature is in the space it lands on, it makes a save, strength or dex, and on a fail, it takes 28 damage on average. Um, and they're knocked prone, which is pretty big. I think that this is really good if there's large groups of enemies that are in close quarters. So this is really only worth it if the bullet can land on two or three people. Two is the bite is still maybe better, and three the the leap is going to be better. But that is going to be have to be three people all in where the bullet would land, which is pretty small. So on a battle map, it'd be the four boxes that the bullet takes up because it's large there'd have to be three creatures in those four boxes so how often that's going to come up i don't know but all of these taxes together get is why they have the description land shark they'll wait and then as soon as it comes up they'll like swim in the earth and then they'll bite their target which is going to do a lot of damage and it's going to be just devastating and uh yeah, it really is a uh, really powerful ability. Another thing about bullets is they do not hunt in packs or anything. They are just lone creatures. Um, there's not bullets really don't come together unless they're mating, and even then, like the female eats the male, so there's just they're just one. So at any given time, there should really only be one bullet. But I think having two provides an interesting dynamic for the party where. Uh, they have to worry about these two bullets. So I ran these recently in my campaign and it was cool because during the party's turn they can't see the bullets because they're underground most of the time. So they just have to hold their actions or try and do something else. While the bullets just swim around in the earth, pop up, attack, and then retreat back down. So they take opportunity attacks or held actions, but overall they just can really wreck the party. And a lot of parties that don't hold actions often or don't have to deal with these nuanced mechanics, they kind of get caught up in it. 
And a lot of times it just kind of locks them down to where they don't know what to do. Um, I would have these bullets kind of retreat when they're around a third of their health remaining. So when they have about 30 HP, so 20 to 30, I think is when they would start retreating. Um, I think one thing that the bullet is really, really missing in its stat block is a way to combine its bite with a, uh, a grapple or a restrain, especially when you incapacitate somebody. So the problem I ran into is the bullet came up and bit one of my party members and it uh, incapacitated him, he got knocked. But it just had to let go and just leave him there because it couldn't take him with him. And I think that's one of the biggest weaknesses of the bullet is that it doesn't have that restraint ability. So what I would do if I was remaking this bullet is I would keep the stats the same. I would just add something on the bite action that says um, if the bullet is biting a restrained creature or an incapacitated creature, an unconscious creature, a paralyzed creature, just list all those conditions that you want to, then the creature is either swallowed by the bullet or it's restrained or grappled with, by it, and uh, that it doesn't imp impede uh, the monster's burrow speed. This, however, I think is really brutal because as soon as somebody gets bit once and knocked, they just get taken away and there's like no recovery from that so it is really brutal um, and I think that actually would increase the challenge rating by at least one or two just off of that alone because if it bites a creature that's restrained or unconscious or incapacitated or paralyzed they just get wrecked they're just gone and there's very little chance of saving them so it is a really brutal ability to add to their stat block um, I think the biggest story elements for the bullet is to have it terrorizing a hobbit village. So imagine a bullet, you know, going through the plains, digging around, eating everything, finds a hobbit village, and it just camps there. So it would start setting up there, it would, you know, just eat on the village, snack on them for a long time. Um, I think another cool idea is that uh, it has like a certain field that it lives under, so anybody that goes in that field or any animals that go in that field just get chomped. And uh, you could have somebody, you know, lure the party out there for a uh, exchange or something so that when they walk forward and cross the field, they just start getting chomped. Um, I think there's a lot of cool storytelling elements with this. And I think those are just some of them. Those are just the beginning. So make sure to let us know in the comments if you have any other storytelling opportunities, if you have a better one of those restrained grapple mechanics for when you knock somebody, um, if you have any ideas about just why the bullet is cool that I didn't include in this video, make sure to comment that because we'd love to hear it. I think bullets are super cool and I hope you do too. And uh, hit the subscribe button because we're going to be releasing a new video every day and you're not going to want to miss that. So thanks for watching.